the big challenge is that people still get sick from the flu and the virus mutates every year and so the vaccine is kind of playing catch up to that and you'd really like to have something that could fight the flu even though it's changing, even though it's mutating. We developed a technique called super resolution microscopy and it allows us to see what's happening at the molecular scale inside of a cell that's either being infected by the flu or has some parts of the flu virus present. And we discovered that one of the components, which is called HA or hemagglutinin, it's the H in H1N1, is connected to a lipid that's part of the host cell. This lipid's called PIP2. And while many lipids are kind of passive players, this particular one is able to signal or control signaling in the cell. And that's one thing that the virus could exploit. So we discovered that they're together, the HA and the PIP2 are together in the same region and also that they affect each other, how they move and how they concentrate and how they cluster. That discovery means that there's probably an interaction of some kind between these two things, the HA and the PIP2. And if we could attack that interaction and break it up, then that could stop the virus from being able to manipulate the cell. We think that the HA and the PIP2 are interacting through the tail on the HA, which is a very short region, but it's very much consistent from strain to strain. I mean, you could screen a bunch of different drugs to see if something is able to block that interaction. This is a super resolution image of HA, the flu protein in green, and PIP2, which is the cell lipid, and that's colored in pink. And so there are areas where the two are together and it makes a strongly white cluster. If you attack part of the virus that changes each year, then your strategy has to change as the virus changes. If you attack part of the virus that's invariant, that's conserved from year to year, and that's what the tail is, it's consistent, then either the virus gets killed by or isn't able to replicate because of the drug, or the virus mutates something that it needs and then it dies on its own. It's a connection that's never been seen before, and if we can block that interaction, then we have something that the virus can't mutate out of. I think of this as kind of like a bad relationship. Three people that are um, competing. The HA is stealing PIP2 away from those other proteins. So kind of like a bizarre love triangle. The target of the vaccine and that's... I think it's really exciting. Some people were quite surprised. I know some of my colleagues have heard what we found and they're already planning some of the parts of their lab's work to use this and investigate this finding further. The flu causes tens of thousands of deaths per year in the United States. The available drugs for treating the flu are quite limited and the viruses that are circulating have resistance. Some of them have resistance to the available drugs. Um, all it takes is a few mutations to get us from the strains that are going around now into a 1918 type flu. That type of virus would be a disaster. I mean, it was a disaster. We'd like to have some more options for fighting off something like that.